Divine Truth Assistance Group. Group Assistance Sessions Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action. This recording is from the Understanding God's Loving Laws Group and is part of an Education in Love series. In the Session 1 Reminders and Homework Review presentation, Mary works through reminders from the previous Foundation Principles session and reviews the homework of the participants. Recorded on the 22nd of November, 2016, in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Let's look at session one. This is the end of session one we're about to do now. Who remembers what session one was even called at this point? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see if I do. <laughs> no, no. Remember session one was all about your foundation principles, wasn't it? The foundation of absolutely everything. So I'm going to run through with you just what we covered in that session very briefly. Um, and then I want to spend the majority of the time talking to you guys about what you reflected on in your homework activities. And um, that will be the basis of me reviewing really the principles with you, is just talking about your reflections and hopefully illustrating some things to you from my own reflections to help you understand the principles in practice, if you like. Yeah. All right. But let's have a look again at this um, kind of conceptual diagram that we're using all the way through this group to help you understand what it is we're on about. So remember, God is this what kind of entity who remembers? Yeah. Infinite. Infinite entity who has a character, nature, attributes and desires which are also infinite and perfected. And these, this character and nature really produces or governs the principles that God has. And we're learning all about those principles so that it becomes almost easy or intuitive for you to then understand the laws. Because remember, we don't have time to cover every law. Um, and given that they're all still being created as we're talking, would be impossible, wouldn't it? Yeah. And then as you're going to learn about today, God's laws exist within a hierarchy. And this hierarchy is contained within each law, and you're going to hear about how it's within each creation as well. But all of these laws govern God's creations. So we got that, hey? Yeah, all right. The foundation principles really helped us to kind of learn a little bit about God and God's nature, didn't it? Yep. And if you think back to your outlines, we didn't have time to go through them all uh, with you, but we had a whole section in each outline, didn't we? What this principle reveals about God. And I know I find that really inspiring to, to reflect on those things because it helps me feel closer to understanding God's character and nature. Yep. But these foundation things govern all law. All law, every single law is governed by these, these eight principles that we spoke to you about. And they really ensure that we can exist in the universe and experience love and live in this sense of safety and security. And remember, we talked a lot about the relationship between fear and really when we know these principles, we start to gain a sense of safety, don't we, about our existence. Yeah. Okay. All right. This is the easy bit where you guys get to tell me what we talked about. What were the first two principles? Love and truth. Yeah, you can call them out. Yeah. And then life and development. Yes. Next slot. Economy and function. Excellent. And the final two, which were a bit more of a stretch for us, weren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Permanence and scope. You got it. Awesome. So it's, I'm gaining some evidence here that you've probably just been looking at them to do your homework, so that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> and the other presentations, remember we had the fundamental facts, which I'll quickly touch on again in a minute. And what was our other one that was? Comparison. Human law comparison, exactly. Yeah. Did anyone have any good reflections about that comparison on your off day? Or were you, yeah, awesome, awesome. You can see why we bring it up in the first session, can't you? Because we're kind of planting a seed and then we'll talk more about it in this session. Trying to stir you all up so that you're more open for the third session, which is all the good gear. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Not that this isn't good, but yeah. All right. Okay. So I think we've covered a lot. I don't want to spend too much time here again reviewing these fundamental facts, but we know God's infinite now, and we know that the that God's basic Basically, God's nature governs the principles that we're learning about. The principles govern the law, and the law governs the creation, which is kind of really what you'd expect of God, isn't it? It all sits together nicely. And perhaps this point is something that we need to emphasise, that understanding law requires following God's way and receiving God's love. So you can see that we haven't changed that <laughs> fundamental fact, but hopefully learning all these things begins to open you up to that desire. Yeah, all right. Now, who wants to share one awesome reflection they had about uh, the human law comparison on their off day? And a few hands went up. Uh, Denise, just to help us review it. So remember we learnt there's a big disparity between human law and God's laws. Yeah, I discovered a huge rage at authority and mm -hmm. um, and I had directed all of that towards God, all of yeah. my parents' stuff, or everything, and that it had um, completely stopped my relationship with God or even any hope of developing it developing. even further. Yeah. yeah, it was massive rage. Yeah. yeah, awesome, awesome. Yeah, and we get the chance to talk more about that tomorrow. We go to Marie on this side and then Pete on that side. Um, I could feel that um, I haven't got a hope of having a relationship with God because I'm so rebellious about all law. I'm a law unto myself. I just make it up. I demand. I'm just... And I feel like I feel lucky that now I know why I don't have a relationship with God. Yeah, so, it's good. It, it's, as I said to the last group, information is great because it empowers you to make different choices, doesn't it? So... Uh, some of the people in the last group were having all these realisations and when we did the homework that we're just about to do, they're like, yeah, I'll break it here and I'll break it there and I'll break it here. And, and, <laughs> and I was like, but guys, now, knowing this now, you know the principle, you know how you're breaking it, it means you can make different choices. Yeah. Okay, Pete, before we move Just on. adding to that, it was like a huge relief. Yeah, yeah, that's cool, hey. You know what the problem is, hey. I'll just take this earring off because I think I'm in hearing. Yeah. All right. And this point is what I want to emphasise with you, is that if I keep treating God's law like human laws, I'll continue to remain unhappy and in pain. So you guys are realising I'm in a rage, I'm in pain, Ooh, maybe there's a relationship. That's great. That's what we wanted to help you gain from that presentation. All right. Now let's get on to your homework. It means we've got a good bit of time to talk to you about what your reflections were. And I've written some down as well, just things that I think you might not have thought of. So let's have a look at the first one, which was love principles. And I'll just leave this slide up here because we can um, refer to it. This is what our principle is, the summary of what it's all about. Who had an example of when they're out of harmony with this law? Adria? Who didn't have an example? Yeah. <laughs> I should say, who had an example they want to share? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, for example, when I invite other people to engage my addictions with me, yes. I'm out of harmony with love. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Very or, good one. Yeah, if you got one more. Yeah, I got a few, but not being humble and not wanting to feel my emotions. Yes. Uh, yeah. 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 Very good. Very basic ways that... We are out of harmony with the love principle. Thank you. And something that I wanted to point out to you guys, that when we break the love principle, remember this is the foundation of the foundation, is love and truth. When we break the love principle, we're automatically breaking every single one of those billions of laws that exist. Which is kind of breathtaking to consider, isn't it? And hopefully kind of reinforces the importance of learning about this principle, understanding this principle, and living more in harmony with it, or living completely in harmony with it. Be good, hey? Yeah. Another example, Claudia. Um, I, going through the homework, I actually felt that with everything that I listed, almost all of the principles came up. Um, and that made me realise that there is no such thing as a little sin that doesn't matter. Um, yeah. It's really big. Yeah, 
Great reflection, definitely. And something that I don't know if we've really emphasised with you guys yet in this group is that every single one of the principles that we're discussing is really an aspect of what real love is. So if you, if you think about the other ones, life, development, economy, function, all of those things are aspects of love. So if, you, if you're not... If you don't have those things within what you're, the feeling you call love, then it's not really love. Mm. And that's, that's similar to Claudia's reflection, was almost getting her to that point. We're saying, look, everything I'm doing seems to be breaking all of these principles. Yeah, yeah. Okay, anyone else had one more? Catherine? It's very <laughs> much like... Um, what you were saying and um, I've um, written down um, uh, if I ask God for his love but I do not know what love is how can I receive it yeah but the truth is you probably can actually Catherine because it's if you think about receiving God's love it gives you the most fundamental education in what is love, doesn't it? In fact, you can learn all these principles through observation of everything around you, and it takes a long time and a lot of years, or you can connect to God and then you automatically, it feels automatically, understand what love is. So you don't actually have to know before you ask. Well, I have been asking, but... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But sometimes what I would say to you is that the way we're injured about love prevents the sincerity in the asking of the love. So we feel like, oh, like love's going to be oppressive, but I should ask for it because it'll make my life better or whatever. But because that feeling's still sitting in us, it, it dampens the sincerity of our desire. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Okay. I'm going to list a few of my examples because I had a whole page here that I thought would be good to talk to you guys about. So, Adrian's mentioned addictions, and obviously when we're in harmony with this principle, we want to see our sin, don't we? So every time you recognise, I don't want to know my sin. Jesus just told us a whole heap of stuff at the start of this group, and I actually don't want to know. I feel really shut down now. Well, I'm out of harmony with the principle, aren't I? This desire to hold on to our intergender injuries which is a big issue that we've been highlighting with you guys all the way through this group, that's way out of harmony with this principle, isn't it? And you can't really love 50% of God's population, you know, God's children, and hate the other 50. That, that doesn't work, <laughs> you know. And also you can't really hate one half of a soul and love the other half. And if you're, if you're a heterosexual soul, if you're hating one half of God's creations and they're the opposite gender to you, you're never going to join with them, are you? So it's a big way we're breaking the love principle. And even say I'm a woman and I've got all this stuff with men and I say, well, I'm pretty good with women. I love women, but men, you know. The truth is I'm not even loving women in that state, am I? Because I'm supporting error an injury within them just through my, remember thoughts, attitudes, emotions, these are all things we can measure with these principles. Yeah. Okay, what else did I have? Oh, this is a good one. The desire for others, this is a breaking of the principle, the desire for others to set loving parameters about the way things should go. I don't want to speak up, I don't want to act, I don't want to act in harmony with the truth that I already know. Someone else do that and make me feel safe. Yeah, that's a good one, hey? But everyone who didn't do their prerequisites, why were, they out, why were you guys out of harmony with love, do you reckon? You weren't loving yourself, were you? Because you weren't getting the majority of what you could do, could get out of the group by not doing it. But you also weren't loving the time and effort that everyone else put in to come here and to prepare the material and to make it awesome for you and the thought that went into how can it be the most beneficial for them and all of those things. Yeah. Okay. Being very self-involved. 
a big way that we break the love principle. It's all about me and my feelings are more important and actually everything I do is just about me and me getting pleasure in my life and I don't really care about those other people, they're kind of annoying. We're, <laughs> we're out of harmony with the love principle then as well. Yeah. Yep, and this, this issue, the final thing I thought to point out to you guys was about spending life involved purely in selfish pursuits that add nothing to your own growth, so my own growth, the growth of others around me, care for the environment, or even creating something positively in the world. A lot of us engage in a lot of those activities, don't we? Yep, yeah. Holding grudges, justifying punishment of other people that's not loving just because, you know, we feel cranky, prejudice of any kind, generalising about people based on one experience with that person or what, if they're part of a certain group, on one person from that certain group. All of these things are breaking the love principle. And as you can imagine, because it's the foundation of the foundation of principles, that we could go on all day, couldn't we? Yeah, yeah. All right, so you can see how this love is enforced, compelled and upheld. It's quite an important aspect of the principle, isn't it? When we don't want to uphold love in a situation, we're breaking the principle. Yeah, all right. Hockey dog. Let's move on to truth. Who had some good reflections on the truth principle? If we go to Barb and the other side will go to Rachel. Um, keep doing things that I feel that I have to do to gain my self-worth and self-value. And how's that out of harmony with the truth principle? Because God doesn't believe that, that I have to do that. God loves me. Yeah, so you're out of harmony with God's truth in yep. that way? Yep. yep. Okay. Uh, Rachel? Uh, I resist the emotional truth and feelings of sin and I deny it as absolute emotionally. Yeah, do not, this feeling of like there is no absolute truth. Yeah, yeah, cool. If you just pass ahead to Lani there and on this side we'll come to Karen at the back. Yep. Yeah, Lani? Um. The, the fact that every time I don't speak truth, I'm breaking every law yes. really hit hard and that I haven't been living by God's standard of truth. I've been trying to make my own version of truth up. Yeah. And how fine God's version of truth is. Yes. Yeah. 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 Who else had feelings along that, um, that line? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Karen. Um, just how self-reliant I can be seeking truth and I don't ask God's opinion or seek God's truth. I just try and figure it out by myself. Yeah, yeah, that's a good, good reflection, hey? Yeah. Something I wanted to point out to you guys um, was that whenever we live out of harmony with truth principles, we actually support the growth of fear within ourselves and within other people on the planet. And in that way, if you think about fear as the cause of the majority of violence that happens on the planet, be it emotional violence or physical like war and things, we're actually supporting violence and war by, by breaking the truth principles. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to point out was that this was the... This was the sheet, this is the Q&A sheet in both groups that had the least amount of questions on it. And yet Jesus and I feel this is the area where just about everyone who comes to our group struggle in their day-to-day -day life. They're just completely ignoring this principle most of the time. And yet I don't know if it's because everyone thinks, oh, Teresa, you've been talking about it for so long. Yeah, I get it, tell the truth. But really... <laughs> I'm not saying you do feel like that, I was just wondering. <laughs> but, um, do you know, it's sort of like, it's easy to s simplify, but do we really understand what it means to, to, to be in harmony with truth? Often not very much, hey? Yeah. So I wrote down some examples. Okay. This one just kind of cracks me up sometimes. It's um, where... 
I'll tell you the issue and then I'll tell you why it cracks me up because the issue is not funny. It's the lack of desire to be open, transparent and honest. Now, what I notice is most people have this, like, in a big scale, like, I don't want to be real about, you know, what's really going on in my life or my true state of my finances or my business affairs or anything. I don't want to be transparent about any of it. But the bit that cracks me up is that when I just bump into any of you around the place, I go, g'day, how are you? I can't tell you how many times I just do not receive an answer. Just like, oh, yeah, well, I don't know how to answer that. Or, you know, well, it's kind of been, and I'm not sure. And, it, and for me, how are you? I'm all right. I'm a bit flat. I'm happy. Or I'm sad. It's not a, it's not a um, tricky question. <laughs> and for most of you, it's written all over you, and I tell you how you feel. But, but I just think it's kind of humorous sometimes where a lot of talk can even go on, but I still have no idea. <laughs> and that's actually in disharmony with the truth principle. You know, you just don't want to be frank. You just don't want to be open and honest, Pierre. I find generally tricky to answer this question when someone asks you, how are you? And they don't really want to know. <laughs> well, so, so what would be the most honest thing to say? Well, it's just like, oh, I say you don't really want to know. <laughs> <laughs> so I've, st I've started But now, sometimes I say to people, I don't really want to tell you. <laughs> When someone has shown to me over a long time that when I open up to them and they're quite nasty to me about it, I feel it's okay to say gently and calmly, I, I don't want to share right now. Or, yeah, I'd prefer not to talk about it. See, even you guys don't even do that. I'd be okay with that as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Other ways we can be out of harmony with the truth principle. And remember, when that we're not truthful, we cannot say we are loving. The, the, the two Siamese twins, remember. Yeah. <sighs> Shutting down emotionally after receiving truth. That happened, that happened Friday night big time, didn't it? Everyone just went, Ugh. Happened a bit this morning when I talked to Lily. Ugh. Everyone shuts down. When, when actually, when truth is exposed, it usually exposes emotion. And when we shut it down, we're out of harmony with this principle. Self-punishing after hearing personal truth. That's also demonstrating a closure to truth. I don't want truth. When we're in harmony with this principle, we, we, we want truth. We're inquisitive. We want to know answers. We ask questions. Yeah, yeah. Um, allowing tr untruth to remain unchallenged. So not challenging the untruth in your environment. And if you remember Friday night, Jesus pointed this out for... The majority of the men who are in this audience, yeah, I know it's not right, I'm not saying everything, or, uh, you know, my spouse is doing this again, or whatever, and I'm not going to speak up about it. That's a big issue. It's also an issue, women with women, I've noticed a lot, yeah. What about this suspicion towards others, when there's no basis for the suspicion? Oh, I think they've got a hidden agenda. Hmm. You know, that's, that's really out of harmony with this principle. It's, and if you think about truth and fear being opposites, it's a very fear-based position, isn't it? It's different if you have evidence for your feelings, but, but really, when it's just based on past experiences or, you know, just your general state of, I don't trust anyone, you're out of harmony with this principle. The dobbing mentality. Do you have that overseas? That's big here dobbing someone in. <laughs> This means you're telling on someone else. Oh, you dobbed. It means you got me into trouble, you know. And Australians, big in Australia, it's almost honoured to not tell the truth about when you know someone else has done something wrong. Or this feeling like, oh, I told the truth about what another person did. Now I'm responsible for what's happening to them. That's not even logical, is it? But a lot of us feel that way when in fact it's the, own, the person's own actions that are creating the, the repercussions and the effects. But we say, oh, it's because I spoke the truth. It's a big disconnect, isn't it, from truth? Yeah. Okay. Anyone else have... Oh, I better move on, actually, because we've got so many. But I did want to labour love and truth quite a bit because I feel like it's a big area where just about everyone is still really 
struggling, really ignoring the principles. And if you think about it, it, while we do that, we're pretty lost when it comes to God, hey? All right. Okay. Life principles. Now, if we look at our slide, life is promoted, nurtured, respected and sustained. And remember, when I was giving you this homework activity, I asked you to reflect about how you're in or out of harmony with the principle. And something I forgot to mention, and I'll mention it again when I give you next homeworks, but if you look at your outline, you've got objectives for each principle. Something that's really handy for me when I'm reflecting, am I in it or out of the harmony with the principle, is that, do I have these objectives? Do my actions meet these objectives? So that's a good way for you to reflect about these principles as well. So, Life Principles is all about promoting and nurturing life and preventing imbalance. So who had an example where they thought they were, Joanne, <laughs> in or out of harmony? So if we go, Joanne, are you in or out? Out. Anyone in? <laughs> Sherry. I justified abortion by telling myself that it was just an embryo or a fetus. Yeah. Yeah. I totally disconnected that it was a form, of, that it was life. Yeah, yeah. So that's a big one, isn't it? For lots of people who've had abortions or their partners have had abortions. Yep, it's a big breaking of the principle. If we go back to Sherry, in the meantime, where's our, yeah, if we go to Sherry. Sorry, I should have got the other side. Um, I thought one that was in harmony was um, not spraying our house with termite spray so they could live and then seeing all the positive things that yep. they do on the property. Yep, yep. Okay, cool. Any, yep, that's good. Anyone else? If we go um, on this side to Nicholas and on this side to Lorleen. Yeah, just a simple thing. I, I, I don't breathe enough. It's like, like I'm not breathing and not feeling my breath, you know, and then I say, oh. Just breathe. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very physical thing, hey? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Support your own life. Yeah. And <laughs> what's really interesting is um, that often we don't breathe because we're trying to shut down fear, which is another way. Shutting down fear is another way we break the life principle because we're basically causing our own illness. Mm. Try, we're basically stopping our life, really, by stopping the flow of emotion. Yeah. Lorleen? Um, just to continue on with Joanne, the, that the abortion of children um, prevent these children from being able to supply that life force from God through their own procreation abilities and disregarding life sacred. So preventing them the possibility yeah. to, to um, help another soul have an earth, earth-based life. Yeah, yeah, I never considered any of these things. Yeah. I never considered any of these things, mm. yeah. Okay. All right, let's move on because we've got a lot of principles. Development principles. So this one's all about change and growth. Who had a good reflection on this one? Mm, Eloisa? Yep. And right up the back to Tess. Yep. Um, I have had some positive um, experiences with that as well as negative ones, because yeah. I feel like I've super been trying to shut it down. And there was a lot of sadness in how much I've done so because of how that then, um, the contrast and when you do just allow development of all the gifts that come with just being open to change. So so what was your way you were in harmony? Being um, so open? I was in harmony to, I suppose, experiment more with some of the laws that I knew about before yep. knowing about what you guys are telling us now. Um, and did an experiment in my family with those of just upholding truth and love as much as I could see yes. to do and how positive automatically, like I didn't even have to do anything, I didn't even have to cry and everything was good. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did a lot of things actually. You decided to uphold love and truth. That was not a small decision, but I agree. You had so many positive benefits that you didn't anticipate, did you? I didn't And anticipate. you grew in ways you didn't realise you were going to grow. Yeah. Like none. And and I suppose the difference of feeling that now is um, just shut, fear shutting down so, 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 so much. And I can still feel now how much that restricts us 
and really development's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's awesome. All right, Tess? My one's a negative one. Yeah. <laughs> um, when I allow my money issues to stop me in any way for de from development of self-love or love of others. Yeah, yeah. So we get in this lack feeling, I'm not going to spend the money on gift, giving a gift that my heart really says I want to or on my own development, I'm not going to spend the money. Yeah, yeah, all right. Some of the ones I wanted to mention to you guys was about Refusing to be inquisitive, we mentioned that in the truth one, hey? You actually stop your own development by deciding not to ask the question or not find out more. The willingness to remain stagnant. I had that and Jesus said, for any moment in time. <laughs> the willingness to be stagnant just for a moment. And some people, you know, we've been sitting on our stuff for not just a moment but years now after we've known about them. And that's a big way we're stopping our development. Yeah, 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 all right. And even placing addictions ahead of things that will create our growth. So if you go back to the example of not doing the prerequisites, uh, what were the addictions that got in the way that you honoured more than actually just doing the prerequisites? The prerequisites are there to aid your development. Your addictions are shutting down your development. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'd love to hear from more of you guys, but we, we just have to keep pushing through. Okay, economy. If we go to Kathy and Nikki. So this principle is all about valuing our resources equally and creating function in an economical way. Um, I had out, an out example yes. was Wasting time by resisting personal truth. Yeah. Like yeah. wasting my development It's, it's time. a wasting time. I it agree. It takes yeah. longer. Good one. <laughs> Thank you. And it probably follows on from some, I can follow on from that and something that I wanted to raise with you guys. When you waste opportunities, when you refuse an opportunity, it's actually not good economy. Some of the biggest regrets of people in the spirit world are uh, the, the opportunities they had to do good, to grow, to, to um, explore or experiment that they didn't take while they were on Earth. And then sometimes you have to wait for many, many, many years, and sometimes it never happens again for you to have that same opportunity. And it's not economical, is it? Like, we're, we're sort of seeing this, this opportunity as like, oh, but really, some of the biggest changes in your life can happen from just making one loving decision, taking one loving opportunity. And a lot of us don't realise that if we do take a loving opportunity, it will result in good things. It, it will. It's not a maybe. If we do, if it is a loving intention and it is a loving opportunity, if we do, it's it's going to happen whether we know it's tomorrow or in 10 years' time or 50 years' time, there will be a loving outcome. Yeah, yeah. All right, who were we at next? Nikki, yep. So Jesus mentioned this in the talk, but um, I've got quite a big personal experience with this, but the creation and administering of a forum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, I did a lot of reflection and it takes a lot of my time, matter and energy and it's not a self-maintaining thing. Yes. And I was realizing the only way a forum could be, you know, like economical is if pretty much everyone on there is like a one with God and <laughs> <laughs> they're self-responsible and it, it'll kind of function its, itself if everyone's like that. But, yep. you know, with me, like being, having tons of my own issues as well, like it's just like really hard and it's going against this principle, so. It is great reflection. How many other people create things that just require so much maintenance and you're in the end, you almost, you got so excited about creating it and then you're like, oh, you know, that's a good sign. That's a, that's a law-based indication that something was out of harmony when you, when you uh, did it. Yeah, thanks, Nikki. All right. Another thing that I mentioned with the previous group that I thought was good to mention as well is seeing seeing non-renewable resources as more important than money. So if you think about your time and your opportunities here on Earth, 
a lot of them are non-renewable. Well, time is non-renewable. Once it's gone, it's gone. That moment's past, that moment's past, that moment's past. And you can't ever get it back. Whereas a lot of people go, look, I need to save money, so I'm, I'm not going to spend my time doing that thing that's in harmony with love or truth. And, and that's a big, it's not a logical thing to do, and it's very out of harmony with the economy. Um, and seeing your own resources as more important than the resources of others. Did anyone consider that? Yeah. Because that's a, that's a big way we're out of harmony with economy principles. When we say, no, me having abundance is more important than that other person having enough. Yeah. All right. Function. Let's hear from a couple of you about function. How did you go? Any good reflections? Uh, we'll go to Nikki again. Anyone else? Everyone's a bit lost on function. Remember, this one is all about valuing outcomes equally. Oh, now, who's an artist in the audience? Did you not have reflections? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, Nikki. Um, I don't know if this this is accurate, but um, I was just thinking resisting going through the repentance and engaging that law, um, as it'll have multiple benefits, not just for me, but the people I've harmed and the other things of God's creations that have harmed, it'll all kind of benefit everything, so. Totally, yeah. that's a very appropriate um, reflection, definitely. This, this, when we act in harmony with God's laws, there's, God's already built in the multifunctional benefits. And so, the, but our will is kind of like the wild card often. And it, but if we engage our will that way, there's m multiple positive benefits, yeah, awesome. Okay, who else had one? If we go to Marie on that side and Alex on this side. I reflected on um, having worked really hard to change myself physically when in actual fact all I had to do was embrace the principles and God and truth and love and it would have just happened. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Economy and function, that one, hey. Yeah, a lot of us put a lot of effort into... What about just gyms? You just at the gym, you're walking on a treadmill, not going anywhere, but you're losing kilos. You know, how many functions is that meeting? None. It's kind of taking resources and you could just go and like dig a hole, but no, we've got to do the aerobics or whatever, you know. Like, yeah, yeah. Okay, Alex. Yeah. Um, I draw and paint um, stuff that is good to look at, but also invokes self-reflection and feeling. Yeah, if that's happening, that's good. Yeah. Well, sorry, I, I just found it was a natural thing that I just realised, oh, it's a way to express my feelings. Oh, to access your feelings. Imagine yeah. if you did it It's a also. bit selfish though, isn't it? It's like what well, Jesus was saying, like it's... <laughs> I'm putting out there how I feel. So. Yeah, if, if you let me finish. Sorry. Yeah, it's actually, a, it would be awesome if you did it to reflect and invoke reflection in other people yeah. as well as yourself. Yeah. But I agree, when we do engage with something that like art or some pursuit that actually helps us connect more emotionally, there's a multifunction there, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Thanks. just got to consider these, the things that we, the end result, is that useful? Does it have a function? Yeah, yeah. All right, let's move on. We've got two more, and these are good ones. Permanence principles. I don't know if you got <laughs> lots, lots of hands went up for this one. That's good. This one, this unchangeable, consistent, permanent, and self-enforcing aspect to this principle, if you think about it, it actually ensures justice in God's universe, doesn't it? It means given the equal, you know, uh, action, will-based things, situation, circumstances, there will be a, a penalty that's equal and fair and impartial to everyone who engages that first thing. So a lot of us get very disillusioned about the idea of justice, don't we? But the fact that one of God's foundation principles is permanence means that we can know that justice exists, actually. Mm, yeah. All right, who had their hand up? Karen and Monique. If we go to Karen first, yeah. Actually, when I used my spirit influence, I could easily answer every single of the foundation principles. Um, but what I said for permanence was, 
I'm out of harmony with permanence because I've always believed that my spirit influence will resolve itself if I keep trying hard and being good, even though it is the very thing that causes it. <laughs> and yeah. that I'm breaking the law of free will and somehow not believing it is a permanent law. <laughs> yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So you feel like if you keep if you keep breaking the law in exactly the same way, this permanent law is going to shift to meet you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cool. Thank you. Monique? Uh, it's actually quite similar. Um, that thinking I've been lackadaisical or whatever, a justified addiction and um, stagnation and giving up, thinking it's all a mystery, like everything's a mystery and when something good happens it's a rare chance event yep. and I've just got to wait like for the stars to align before it will happen again. Yeah. <sighs> Not uh, missing the fact that there are mathematical formulas that were consistent for every outcome and every time I use my will to engage either way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, awesome. It's funny, isn't it, on earth, there's almost like a romanticism of mystery. And, you know, a lot of Christian faith, it's all a mystery. Just you can't know. And it's a way of avoiding a whole ton of emotion. And just this idea, this romanticised idea that it's a mystery and you can't even... People get very caught up in it and it's totally in disharmony with God's, God's nature, actually. God wants us to know and engage. And, and when we just do a will-o'-the-wisp kind of like, oh, well, it'll happen one day, we're really disengaging with, with our own, all these principles we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, cool. If we go back to Katrina. Um, I need to develop more faith in God's goodness. And when I look back, God has always looked after me. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the cool thing about permanence that I mentioned to the last group is that it actually helps us to grow faith. And what I notice a lot of people doing is that they'll have a good experience and they'll feel like, oh, wow, this works, you know, I felt something, I felt a change in my life or whatever. But they don't, they don't use that experience to grow faith that it'll happen again, it'll happen again. Whereas if we really embrace permanence, we would know we would know that God's designed it that way, actually. If I keep with this sincere desire, there's permanent laws that respond. Yeah. It's a great way to grow faith. Yeah. Who else? If we go to Max. Um, not trusting that I can feel an emotion and survive it. Yeah, so that one's out of harmony with with really even the way you create it, isn't it? The, the life and development even as well, isn't it? Yeah. All right, if we come to Barb. Did you have your hand up? Yep. Um, in this um, awesome principle, I was also though reflecting on how we ignore the permanence principle and expect justice immediately in our society all the time. So therefore society and we believe that permanency doesn't exist because we're not seeing justice occurring instantly or, you know, within yeah. a life period or something like that. Well, let me put this to you, thank you. It follows directly in what I wanted to raise with you guys. I feel that there's a strong resistance to permanence in humankind because we're pretty addicted to preferential things. So there isn't a strong desire for true justice on the planet because we think it's a special case for our family or, no, it's my kid or it's my husband or it's my issue. So it shouldn't apply to me equally as it applies to other people. And if you think about our legal system, the way it works is there's a lot of preferential treatment that goes on in there, isn't there? depending on how much money you have, the colour of your skin, all of these things. And so that shows to me that humankind at this point is very injured about the idea of permanence and doesn't have a strong feeling of justice because it's reflected in the way that we treat family members versus non-family members, other children versus our children, our extended family versus strangers we meet. There's a lot of differences, isn't there, in the way that we treat those people in terms of being preferential, I mean. Yeah. And that shows a big disharmony with this permanence principle. We also allow kids to be violently abused by adults and call it discipline, but when adults do it to adults, we call that assault. So that's not very permanent either, is it? 
And a big, a big thing that I feel a lot of you haven't really considered, perhaps, is the way that you've raised your kids. Has there been permanency in the laws that you've had with them? Or is it just the mood you're in on the day? Or, you know, uh, I want you to be this certain way because it doesn't challenge me, but I don't care what you do in those other areas because it's not bothering me. And not thinking about the actual principles involved and having permanency, even between your kids, like boy kids get away with this, girl kids get away with that. Like all of that stuff is a big disharmony with the permanence principle. Yeah. All right, as Jesus said many times in the first century, you've got to let your yes mean yes and your no mean your no and stand by it. And when often in our families, in our relationships with our kids, we don't have that level of permanency. In our business agreements, in our, even our engagements with other people, just socially. Yeah. All right, let's go on to our last one. Scope. This was the beauty for everyone, wasn't it? Yeah. So this one, you know what, it allows everything to be governed by law and as you're going to see, we are going to expand a lot more on this principle in the, in the next session, the next two days. But scope also allows for cooperation. Did you think about that? It allows for cooperation between creation. Yeah. And it allows for things to build upon other things. So who had some reflections of being in or out of harmony? Pete and Paul. Um, not educating myself and thinking I'm dumb and stupid with science. So when I stop allowing myself to I, I be open to learning, then there's all these missed opportunities. Yeah, so really resisting the whole principle. Totally. Yeah. yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, Paul? Um, for me, it's like living by the certainty of God's law and it's like a vulnerable place, I feel, um, to be in that space of... If I'm not in alignment with God's law, you know, stuff will happen. That, that, will, cor you, that will correct me. It will correct you and that feels vulnerable? It, it, well, well, that's a vulnerable place, I feel, knowing that, that, that we're very governed by God's law and, and the, all the scope of God's laws are working on I reckon soul. it's an awesome place. Vulnerable often indicates that there's a risk. Yeah. And really, when we're in harmony with these principles, we actually eliminate risk of unexpected or terrible things happen, happening to us. We're just open to correction. That's all going to be loving. Yeah, I think that's perhaps a lack of faith and a, and, and, and a fear of... Of, of living in harmony with it. Yeah, well, uh, um, as a result of not following, you know, my parents' law and stuff like that, I think. Gotcha. All righty. Okay, dog. If you go next to you too, is it Sky? Yep. Um, I believe God hasn't given me a soul that is immortal, so I think I will die. Yeah. And I just live fully in my facade at all times. Cool, cool. Good reflections. Uh, Fabio? I, um, I resist feeling emotions, which is therefore completely disregarding the, the inbuilt rule that's in my soul yeah. to feel. Yep, yep. Awesome. If we go next to you to Laura, and then I'll mention a few. I control any possibility of being overwhelmed. Yeah. Yeah, so similar to Fab, hey? Yep. So, and we know from everything Jesus has taught us before, the overwhelm creates the growth, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. I had some reflections about ownership over creations. You see this a lot on earth, don't you? I made it, it's mine, I'm going to control what happens to it. Now, God doesn't do that. God, God actually encourages God's creations to go on and reach new potentials to be built upon, to have new laws and new outputs and new things. Whereas a lot of times people create something and they copyright it or they control it and that's actually out of harmony with this principle. If we were in harmony with it, we'd go, I've got this great idea. I really want to perfect this thing, whatever it is, education in harmony with God. Okay, I'm going to do it, and everything I learn, I'm going to document. And then I'm going to share that with everyone. So I want to have the awesome school, but I want the potential for all these other awesome schools to exist all over the globe. And I'm going to create the potential for that. I can't do it all on my own, but I'm going to create the potential. It's like each one of those smaller creations that 
go together to form the larger one that has the bigger laws governing it that you learn about in scope, on its own it can't do everything that the, the more complex creation does, but it's able to be formed together to create something with, with more scope. So, yeah, just something to think about. All right, guys. So that's the end of our discussion of foundation principles. As you're going to learn, this was very much the, um, the introduction to everything that Jesus is going to speak to you about in the, the next couple of days. Just a reminder, these principles form the foundation of the universe itself. They allow us to obtain some basic facts about God's nature. And do you feel like that's been achieved? You've kind of learnt more about God in these last two days. And they ensure law allows our existence to experience love and to have less fear. In fact, to be fearless, which is pretty awesome that God created us to have no fear. That's God's desire. That's what God's, God's laws are acting, to eliminate all fear. All right. So we're about to start our next session, our next two-day block, which is going to be order principles. And coming up next, we'll have a 10-minute break. And I'll come back and introduce those order principles to you. So if I can see everyone back at 11.30. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone, for your participation.